Hello and welcome to this video on finding a quadratic function from its graph. Alright, so in this particular video what we're going to see are graphs of parabolas, right, graphs of quadratic functions, a couple examples. And in those graphs you'll be given the vertex of the function of the parabola, right, either that highest point if it's opening down or the lowest point if it's opening up. So you'll be given the vertex and, uh, you know, at least one other point, one other ordered pair on the graph of the parabola. And we're going to start off by writing the, equa the, the function in what's called vertex form. Right? And I have put up vertex form in a previous video if you've been watching, but you'll see it again here. Okay, so my first example, I have this picture of a parabola that's opening downward, right? And I'm given the same instructions for both, uh, both examples I have for you. Find the quadratic function whose graph is given, right? So this is pr find the equation for this parabola here. Write the function in vertex form, right? This was vertex form here. We had f of x or y equals, you know, some number a multiplied by the quantity x minus h squared, right, this quantity squared, plus k. And if you recall that in this form, right, if I write the equation of a parabola in this form, this h inside the parentheses here that's being subtracted from x is the x-coordinate of the vertex, right, the vertex of the parabola has x-coordinate h and the plus k, this k outside the parentheses, outside the square, uh, is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So if we know the vertex, which we are seeing right here, right, here's this parabola, and there are some points that are labeled. Remember the vertex is, you know, since this is opening down, is this highest point right here, which has coordinates, you know, negative one, two, Right. So because the vertex is, you know, negative one, two, we know the value of h and k, right? So the vertex of the parabola is negative one, comma two. We now have the equation. We, uh, we don't have the entire thing just yet. All right. So I'm going to do this on a separate piece of paper where I'm going to start off writing this, I'm going to write this function. We have f of x equals, you know, a times the quantity x minus h squared and then plus k. And I know the value of h is negative 1, right, the x coordinate of the vertex. I know the value of k is 2, right, the y coordinate of the vertex. So we ha I don't know the value of a yet. So I still leave that as a times the quantity, you know, x minus eight, uh, minus negative one. Right? I'm replacing h with negative one. And we'll change this, you know, nobody usually writes minus minus, right? x minus negative one, I'll rewrite this as x plus one in a second. But that's being squared. And then plus k is just the number two. All right, so we have f of x or y equals a times the quantity x plus 1 squared and then plus 2. All right, so I'm almost done, right? I have part, most of the equation filled in, the unknowns filled in, but now the part comes where I have to find a, right? I need to know what the value of this a is. All right, and that's where you're going to use another point, right? We've already used the vertex to fill in some piece of this, right? The h and the k. Going to use another point. Now it really doesn't matter which one. Um, so see here I have two points actually labeled on this parabola. The point 0 comma 1, right? x is 0, output f of, f of 0 is 1 or y is 1 and negative 2 comma 1, right? So x is negative 2 and then f of negative 2 is 1 or y is 1. 
Um, so re it really doesn't matter which other one you pick as long as it's actually on the parabola. All right, and we'll use that to find A. All right, so let me slide this up. All right, so I'm going to use the point, you know, 0, 1. So right, the point 0, 1 is on the parabola. So that means when x is 0, you know, f of x is 1, right? Remember, f of x is the same as the y coordinate. The, the function notation means the output. So I replace f of x with 1. So I have 1 here equals, and then we still don't know a, times, and then I'm replacing the x with 0. Yeah. 0, 1 is on this. Uh, 0, so instead of x plus 1 squared, it's you know 0 plus 1, that quantity squared, and plus 2. And we can now, now after plugging in 0 for x and 1 for y, or 1 for f of x, you see I now have an equation where the only unknown, the only variable, is a. And I can solve for a very easily here. So we have 1 equals, you know, this is a times 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1, so a times 1, but that's just a, and then plus 2, and then all I would need to do to solve for a here is subtract 2, right, so I'd be subtracting 2 from both sides, and that gives me negative 1 on the left equals, and then, you know, a times 1 is just a on the right. Okay, so there's the value of a. a would have to be negative 1. So I plug that back into the function here for a, and we get our function, the equation for this, this graph. Right? f of x equals, you know, negative 1. But remember, when you have a factor of negative 1, usually you just write a minus sign, so negative, and then the, you know, having, having a negative sign in front of the quantity is like having a factor of negative 1. So that's negative 1 for a times the quantity x plus 1 squared and then plus 2. And there's uh, there's the final result, the final answer, what we were asked to do. Um, this equation here, right, f of x equals, you know, negative 1 times x plus 1 squared plus 2. This is an equation for this parabola. And you can double check. Check these points that are plotted. Check these points that are labeled. You know, when x is 0, is the output 1? So plug in 0 for x, and it, it is. When x is negative 1, is the output 2? Yes. When x is negative 2, is the output 1? Yes, it would be. All right, and, you know, so always check your answers at the end. Always double check. All right, now again, this is called the vertex form. All right, the vertex form of the equation for this parabola. But you could also continue on, and you know, they might ask you to write it in that, that general form. Remember the general form or the standard form? Was well, you know f of x or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is where you just actually multiply out stuff and you know write it without parentheses. So if I asked, if I was asked to now take this and put it in this general or standard form ax squared plus bx plus c. Let's do that. So remember, you order of operations, you square, I'll well, do things in parentheses first, but you know, you don't know what x is, so x plus 1 can't be simplified. Uh, then you do exponents, right? So remember what x plus 1 squared is. And whenever you replace part of an expression with a new part, whenever you replace anything, put parentheses around it. So I have this factor of negative 1 times, and then I'm replacing x plus 1 squared with what it's equal to, so I'm going to put parentheses around that. Again, whenever you make replacements, you know, it's not, not a bad habit to get into to put parentheses around what you're replacing. So what's x plus 1 times x plus 1, right? We'll do the foiling and combine like terms. That'd be x squared plus 2x plus 1, all right? Close parentheses. That replaced x plus 1 squared, and then you have the plus 2 after. All right, and now we have to, just to get rid of the parentheses, you know, distribute this negative 1 out of this factor of negative 1 out front here. 
So we have f of x equals you know negative 1 times x squared or negative x squared. Negative 1 times positive 2x would be negative 2x. Negative 1 times positive 1 would be negative 1, but then you have the plus 2 after. Negative 1 plus 2 would be plus 1. Right? And here's the, uh, the equation for the same parabola in this standard form or general form, you know, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is negative 1, b is negative 2, and c is positive 1. Okay, and again, double check, you know, when x is 0, right, put in 0 for x, would the output be 1? Yes, it would. When x is negative 1, you know, put in negative 1 for the x's and simplify it. Would the output be 2? Yeah. When x is negative 2, would the output be 1? And indeed it would. Right? And in fact, this equation here and this equation here, right, you, you see they are the same equation, they just look different. But they represent the same curve, the same parabola. Right? They are the same quadratic function. Okay. Alright, so again, if you're, if you're given an equation of a parabola and you know the vertex and some other point, you can write the equation of that parabola in vertex form pretty quickly. You know, you, you'll, you'll know the h and the k, right, that'll be from the vertex, and then you use another point on the parabola to find the a, right, that factor in front of the square. So let's do that one more time. All right, you know, just one more example. All right, you know, I've written out vertex form again on the top here. Got f of x equals a times, you know, x minus h squared plus k, right, a number times a square plus another number. And this time I have a parabola that's, you know, opening up, right? So the value of a should be positive, right? I've, I've mentioned that in another video, you know, that this a, if it's positive, you're going to have a parabola opening up. And if it's negative, like the last example, you're going to have a, a parabola opening down. So this is a parabola opening up. So the a should be positive when I'm done. That should be, that should be positive. Uh, we see the vertex, right, that point that's at the lowest point of the parabola that's opening up here, right, this is the vertex, okay, um, so that gives me the h and the k, right, so the, the hk, right, the, the vertex, h is the x-coordinate, negative 1, and k is the y-coordinate of that vertex, negative 3. So, on a separate page here again, I'm going to plug those in for h and k. So our, our equation here is f of x, or y if you want, f of x equals, you know, I don't know the a, times, and then, you know, the quantity x minus, you know, and then again, h is negative 1, and, you know, we'll write this as x plus 1 squared, plus, and then, you know, k, the k is negative 3. Again, you know, nobody usually writes plus negative 3, we'll just write minus 3. So this is a times the quantity x plus 1 squared, and then, you know, plus negative 3 minus 3 after the square. Great, and now just like earlier, right, I've plugged in the vertex values, right, the x and y coordinate of the vertex, the h and the k. Now I would like to find this a, and that's using another point, right. So I pick another point on the parabola. So you've got a couple labeled here that we know. There's 0, negative 2. And there's negative 2, negative 2. I'll, I'll use that one this time. You know, last time I used the x, uh, the y-intercept, you know, the, this example. I mean, you can use either one, and you can try it on your own. Use either point, and you're going to get the same value for a, right? That value of a should not be changing, no matter what point you use. So I'm going to use the point negative 2, negative 2, right? So when x is negative 2, you know, f of x is also negative 2. Or when x is negative 2, y is negative 2. So I plug these into my equation here. So on the left side, you know, f of x, that's the output, that's negative 2, equals, then on the other side, I have a, don't know that, times the quantity x, uh, now x, sorry, replacing x with negative 2, right, x is replaced by negative 2, 
then plus 1 all inside that set of parentheses there, and then that's being squared. And then you have minus 3 afterwards. And now look at this. Once I replace x with negative 2 and f of x with negative 2, I get this equation here where the only value left that is unknown is a. And I solve for a. So left side still negative 2 equals, you know, this is a times, and you know, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And negative 1 squared is positive 1 again. So really it's just a again. That's not always going to happen. I know that these two examples, this value ended up being 1 after squaring. It's not always going to happen, right? There, there, there are going to be other examples out there where this value is not 1 to practice on your own. And then I have minus 3 after, right? So a times 1, or just a minus 3. And then all I would need to do is simply add 3 and get, you know, a equals 1, right? Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Uh, and again, you know, I know I, I know in my two examples in this video, the value of a has been 1 or negative 1, but it doesn't always have the number 1 involved. I mean, the value of a could be 2 or 5 or a third or negative 8, you know. Uh, it just depends on what the parabola looks like and what points it's going through. All right, so again, practice some other examples, and you'll see values of a popping out that are not 1 or negative 1. All right, but here the value of a is 1. So I'm replacing a with 1, and that'll give me the, the equation for this function, for this parabola. So then we have f of x equals, you know, 1 times, well, 1 times anything is itself. There's no need to write 1 here for a. So it's just 1 times, and then the, the quantity x plus 1 squared minus 3. And that's it. All right, there, there's the equation for this function in vertex form. All right, it's all well and good. It, it works out. And again, if you want to double check, always double check stuff at the end. You know, look at the other. Look at all these points that are labeled. Do they actually satisfy this? You know, when x is zero, would the output be negative two? And it would. When x is negative one, would the output be negative three? When x is negative 2, would the output be negative 2? And you can check all those just to make sure that you're right. And uh, you'll see in a lot of exercises too, like, a, like, you know, this is fine, this is what I was asked for. But you'll see in a lot of exercises, you know, where I'm like, hey, change this to that standard form, that, you know, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So, if I were asked to do that, you know, you actually just multiply this out, get rid of the parentheses. Well, what's x plus 1 squared? That's x squared plus 2x plus 1. All right, and then you have minus 3 after. And really, there are no, there's no need for the parentheses this time because it's not multiplied by negative 1 or 2. or There's nothing to distribute. So I just really have x squared plus 2x and then plus 1 minus 3. The positive 1 and the, and the negative 3 make negative 2. So I have x squared term. I have a positive 2x term. And then 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. So here's the function in general form or standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is 1, b is positive 2, c is negative 2. And again, if you want to double check, you know, check these points on the parabola. When x is 0 is the output negative 2. When x is negative 1 is the output negative 3. And when x is two, negative 2 is the output negative 2. And it should be, right, because this equation and this equation, both of these in the boxes here, are the same equation. Right? They just they just look different, but they have the same outputs for every, every uh, for every uh, every time you put plug in the same input. All right, wonderful. So, yeah, so if you're given an equate again, if you're given a graph of a parabola, and you know the vertex and at least one other point, you should be able to write the equation for that parabola in vertex form very easily. Right, plug in the h and the k from the vertex and then you plug in the coordinates of another point and then find that a and you'll be done. All right. and as I like to say at the end of these videos, you know, do the best you can to learn the material on your own before you go looking for help. I have found over the years that people that take the time and the effort to learn something on their own uh, tend to remember that material better and also remember it for longer and are more proud of themselves for it. So read the material, of course, uh, read through the author's examples, 
Perhaps even try to work out the solutions to an author's examples before you see how the author did it. And then compare your work with the author's and see if you can learn from some mistakes there. Um, obviously work on tons of exercises, practice problems, you know, look for solutions to those in the back of the book if, you know, if they're ever made available to check yourself, see how you're doing. And that's the only way you're going to get better too is through practice, right? Practice makes progress. And don't just give up on a problem after one or two attempts. You know, very often in mathematics there are several approaches that will work for any particular problem. So if after several attempts at some problems, you know, you're still having trouble, I would suggest you actually go back and read the material again, maybe even a third time, you know, more slowly, more deliberately, take better notes, take good notes, um, you know, because if you've been working on problems, as you should, uh, when you, you know, you'll, you'll have a better idea as to what the author wants from you in that section, what the author feels is important about that section. So when you go back and read it again, you know, you'll have a you'll have a better idea as to what to look out for in the material. You'll know what the author thinks is important, so you're looking for those key words, those key ideas in the reading, and maybe even things will pop out at you in that second or third reading that didn't uh, that didn't pop out at you the first time you read it, and it'll make working on the problems that much easier. Okay, um, but you know, if after that, if after several read-throughs of the material, and several attempts at the problems, you're still not getting it still not you know you're still having trouble you know it, it is not a sign of weakness whatsoever to go out looking for help that is what other people are there for right to help you so ask a teacher a tutor a friend you know someone in your class who you know knows the material well and is willing to help uh, look for supplemental materials online there's tons of it out there look for videos online there's loads of those too videos like this one or plenty of other videos out there that are better than this one. I assure you they're out there and they're easy to find. But just keep at it. Stay persistent. Keep practicing. Don't give up. And above all, and I think this is the hardest thing for most people, stay positive. All right? Believe in yourself. Believe in your ability to make it through your struggles and, and your failures and, and your frustrations. Because it's in those moments of struggle and failure and frustration that you actually have the opportunity to learn the most and also learn the most deeply because if you actually persist and you persevere and you make it through your your frustrations and, and, and figure out how to fix your mistakes through a lot of hard work and effort and trial and error you know you'll remember that material far better and far longer than someone who got it right the first time and breezed through and never gave it a second thought again All right? because you had to struggle there was emotion there All right? uh, emotion is attached to memory and you will remember that because you had to work through and you had the pain and the struggle of getting through that. Right. So, stay persistent. Keep practicing. Stay positive And never give up. All right. And I'm sure you'll get it. And thank you very much for watching.